Spike Rebel Experience and my show, if you don't know, I'm Spike Rebel and basically uh, I paint, I produce and sing and all that stuff that's creative. I love it and I love meeting other artists in Chicago and around the world that do positive things that whatever their talent is that God gave them, some of them uh, are, are very interesting and, and talented seasoned artists but they're not mainstream or you just don't know who they are. So today's guest I have a famous guy that at least that I think is famous and, and that you should uh, know. Chuckle up. Chuckle up. You in this house? Right. What's going on, hey, Spike? How you up, doing man? that, bro? All right. Right on. Come on, sit down and talk to What's going on, TV world? <laughs> <laughs> stage, the stage two show. Yeah, huh? we had stage to show. Spike, how you house? doing there, brother Spike? Man, it's been a minute. Man, thanks for having me, man. Seriously. It's so nice look, to be here. real quick, where you from? Well, uh, for those, well, there's a lot of people that knows where I'm from, but there's a lot of people that don't. So actually, I'm from Chicago, right? Just, just for those who don't know, and I grew up on the west side of Chicago, and and uh, west side, as we always say, right? Yeah. yeah, a lot of great people from from the west side, and uh, so I grew up in 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 the in the housing project called the Rockwell Gardens. For those who know what that is. Huh. And uh, which don't exist anymore yes. there, right? Uh, in the early that? '60s, right? Yeah. Uh, there when I was a little kid, and uh, and so I went to Crane High School, and then I ended up over at Malcolm X College uh, playing with the college band on on bass with, with the bass, and so my life started very early from my uh, my father who did. Uh, Orthopedic shoes. Uh, my mother, I, my mother was deaf, of course, and I had seven brothers and one sister. Seven brothers and one, one sister. One sister. Yeah. So, so, so life for me in uh, in those days was quite interesting. There were there were there were quite a different characters around at that time, and some great people. Uh, 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 and during those days in the 1969, you know, there was the Panthers and the riots all that time, and so all that all that that was going on during the civil rights movement. Uh, uh, propelled me to, uh, to 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 pick up an instrument, which actually started by my father, and all my fathers and his brothers, uh, thirteen uncles and one auntie, uh, they all were pastors and played instruments and okay. things like that. So, so it was now. already destined okay. for me to uh, to play an instrument because because of their DNA, I would say. Okay. And so uh, so I felt that uh, the Creator uh, ordained me to, to eventually play uh, this instrument, which I actually started on guitar, and then later on. The bass came because uh, my little friends at the time we were four, we were teenagers and uh, they moved uh, uh, from out of the projects and so I would have to play his parts. Uh, I was a rhythm guitar player back then. We used to have guitar so lead guitar, guitar players and rhythm guitar uh -huh. players, right? <laughs> and so uh, and now we don't even call it no more. It's like we don't see like really rhythm guitar players like you just we say guitar, right? It's people just say I just play guitar. And so so when he moved. Um, uh, he he couldn't make it over as much as he used to when he moved. And so I said I would take over his part on on you know on, on bass. And so what I would do, I would take my lead guitar, which had six strings, and I would take that off and play and play bass that way. Right? Wow. It was really crazy. And then and then and, and then that's how I ended up actually playing bass because otherwise I probably would end up being a guitar player, which my father was. So so that's how I got into playing bass basically. Now, so now where did your mm -hmm. name Chuckle Up come from then? Chuck Luck came from uh, a friend of mine's, an uh, 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 older gentleman, because back in those days we had always mentors and older people talking to young people, and so uh, I would go over his house and practice. I was playing like little, you know, clubs. I was only like 13. I was in cl already playing 13. clubs at 13, 14 years old. <laughs> I was playing like a grown-up already then at 14, right? But anyway, so uh, I would go over his house on, on, a, on an ongoing basis in basements, and then he saw me chucking around and playing That's licks it. and, That's you know, chuck. playing stuff. and. And he's like, man, it's like, man, you sure chucking on that bass, man. You you chuck a luck, right? And so I went like, hmm, chuck a luck. So I sat there and mar marinated on that for a while. And all of a sudden I said, you know what? That's going to be it. I think that's going to be my name for the rest of my life. And then here we are now uh, uh, too many years later, right? I hear your name in the streets a lot, not in a bad way. Just, just, you seem like everybody has tapped somewhere, playing with you somewhere. So 
Uh, but you you sing too. A little bit. Yeah, I've seen you sing before. Yeah. And you play the guitar, like you just said. Yeah. And you play the bass. Yeah, and I produce, and I well, you know, I I'm, I do a lot of things, you know, uh, with So who uh, you've been on tour, or have you been a band director for some major artists? Okay, well. I'm going to go back in the retro. Uh, when I grew up, at, around about 15, 16, I was uh, uh, in, in high school. And uh, we had, you know, back back then, there there was a huge band era back then. We don't have the, that, that kind you of band era. The and... You had the Barcades, <laughs> you had the Commodores, and yeah. you had uh, 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 Confunction. Confunction. <laughs> I mean, you name those, it, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, a coup in the gang. You have all the great, the maze, Earth, Wind. Earth, Wind, Fire, of course, and uh, and so at that time, you know, for a little kid, you know, I'm look, I'm thinking, man, I want to be, you know, I want to be like one of these guys, and I hope. And so at that time, uh, I had a band called Wacker Drive. That was like Wacker one, or well, Wacker? actually, a band was called the Wild Bunch Band in, in the beginning, okay. right? Okay. It's 1973. Uh, my first band. You had the Izzy Brothers were out. You know, Marvin Gaye, all the Motown music. Uh, Stax Records, uh, we can go on and on and on. And, uh, and so I was inspired to be in the band. So once I, I was able to get in the band from there, I had some horn players that were on tour. And I, I used to have to wait for them to come off tour. And guess who they were playing with? They were playing with the Emotions at that time. Uh -huh. And so I went to go see them and the Commodores and the Emotions was on tour at that time. And, uh, and so I got a call one day and said they, want, they wanted a bass player. Uh, that they needed a bass player because the bass player that they had, well, I don't want to say what happened, but it wasn't good. Okay. But that allowed me an opportunity yes. uh, to, to walk in that door. So I had to audition among other bass players by a guy named Keith Henderson, which was the. Uh, you know Keith. Uh, yeah, you know Keith Henderson. Uh, and for those who, you know, you know a, a great Chicago, guitar player, yeah. right? And so they, so they came off tour for about a week, you know, and uh, he came, he flew back to Chicago to audition me for the for the emotions tour and that's when my life my life career took off was the beginning and the pinnacle part of my of, of my career as 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 a, as a premier bass player that was the beginning of that right for the emotions for the emotions and uh and so once i went on the road i went on the road with the emotions went on tour i i went through the auditions i would never forget that keith henderson's mother she would always say like who's that stumping my floor like that you know <laughs> And I'm this little little young kid stumping the heck out of her floor for two days straight, right? And so I got the audition because, and, and the reason that I, I was so happy to get this job because this was going to lead me to my mentor, which was Verdeen White. See, every bass player and every musician always have a mentor, right? Okay. And so Verdeen White, Earth, Wind, and Fire was my mentor. That's who That's I... That's the one with I, the hair. Jumping yeah, around. and jumping around <laughs> and all that. So I was a jumping around type of kid growing up. Uh, wow. uh, uh, around the hood and everything like that. And so once I, I got with the emotions, I know that, that Maurice White of Earth, Wind & Fire, the leader and founder of Earth, Wind & Fire, was producing them. He was producing the emotions and Denise Williams and, and many other groups. And so I was like, man, this, this might be my chance to go meet Verdine, right? And Maurice White and those things, right? Lo and behold, uh, I was on tour with, with the Commodores. And so when I flew out to San Francisco, that was my first job after the audition. And then uh, before you know it, I was, you know, I was just on just tour with them, with right? They loved the way I played. And okay. uh, I used to be what, that, what I would call their pit bull when it comes to the concert stuff, right? In front of 30,000 people. And we played everywhere from the Madison Square Garden to all the major stadiums are, uh, around the country, uh, here internationally and everywhere. And so, so we was on the last leg of our tour and I was in Los Angeles, uh, a, a theater called the Greek Theater. And for those who know, especially in Hollywood, where all the stars come out, everybody comes out to the Greek Theater in Los Angeles. Okay. And, uh, and so we, had our, we were on our last leg of the tour with the Commodores. That's when Lionel Richie was with the Commodores before Lionel Richie became mm -hmm. uh, so Lionel well. Richie the single artist, right? And so there, uh, people like Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson, Madonna, I mean, some, everybody was at, was at our show. Because at that time, you know, Brick House was out with with uh, uh, the company Rick. line on that, uh -huh. right? And best of my love and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, Maurice happened to see me at the show, right? So, so everybody's hanging out like uh, after the show, and then I got a call. So anyway, we did the performance. It was a great performance. It was the last leg of our tour with the Commodores and Emotions. And then about a week about a, about a week later, I flew back home from the Greek Theater, and I got a call from. Uh, from Wanda, Wanda's the leader, uh, is the girl that sings uh, Best of My Love. Okay. Uh, so, and she said, Marvis White wants you to come out to, to Los Angeles and, uh, and do the next uh, Emotions record. And I was mm. like, you kidding me? And it's like, yeah. So 
I got called, Keith Tenderson was on there, and a brother named Donzel Davis. Okay. Because we were like the icon rhythm sections for Chicago. We were the first of our generation that actually that were doing yeah. world tours and, and, and major television shows. Like, I don't want to go back, but it's like Don Kirshner, Rock Concert, Midnight Special. And, you know, and given I was only 16 when I was on the road, just made 17. And, and the I rest was, of your family was still in Chicago? Everybody was still here. And so, <laughs> I, so I became an instant star just because of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's wow. like really funny, right? It's like it's 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 funny how the world changes. So after so. the tour stuff, uh... so I, so, I, so I went in the studio. Marvis called me, so I flew first class, had some great food on the plane, and I was just ecstatic, really, you know, because I thought, now this is my chance uh, to meet Verdine. Well, lo and behold, I got a call, and it was Verdine White. They gave they gave Wanda gave uh, Verdine my number, and he called me and came pick me up and took me to the studio. Wow. And you know, and he, so was he passing a torch, sort of speaking? Or I don't just, know. I think he was just, you know, you know. Well, those brothers are from Chicago. They're from Chi Town so too, just, right? So it was just that comrade. I was a young kid, so they were looking like this young kid playing like really playing like he's playing, you know. Yeah. And I think it was just a nice gesture that he wanted to do. Little did he know that I wanted to meet him all all this time. <laughs> and then we, and to this day, we're pretty good friends. And uh, uh, and so they took me to the studio, and then before you know it, you know, I I did the album. And with great session players like Marlo Henderson, uh, uh, David Foster was on the record. You heard of David Foster? I don't know David Foster. David Foster. Everyone should know David Foster. Who's I mean, David he's Foster? like David Foster is a composer and a writer. Okay. You see him. Um, you see him on on so many records, man. This was combined fact, he, with him. That yeah, but look, when you get albums. a chance, Google. Now, now, now we got Google these days. Yes. You can Google that guy. But that's someone you should know. Uh, he's one. He's like a Quincy Jones. Okay. Put it that way. He's a, he's a huge composer and writer. And he wrote that song. I think yeah. one of the songs he wrote was uh, "After the Love Is Gone for Earth, Wind, and Fire." Okay. But anyway, so I played with a lot of masters. And then I became. And then after that, after I did my first album with the Emotions, I came back home. There's a, a recording studio called Paul Serrano's, which was, uh, which what I would call the Black Studio. Because that's where all the Afro American artists we record at. People like Matt that Cole. At? That was on Twenty Second Street, where Record Row area is in Chicago. Okay. Uh, it's called Paul Surround Studios, and 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 you, we had artists like People Bryson that that recorded out of there. Uh, uh, Ramsey Lewis, Shaka Khan. I mean, we can go up. Minnie Ripperton. Uh, all of the all of our great Afro American artists recorded there, and so I became of my generation the top bass player session uh, guy okay. at age about age I was about that time I was about uh, just almost making 18 and uh, so immediately after that I, I did my recording and the word got out on the street uh, I became and I couldn't read music that well back then you know but and you I was like yes show. but my talent was so really was so good okay. that it didn't matter to them so my key of getting through all the music was was the producers and people like Tom Tom 84 Washington Tom Tom Washington is another composer, uh, Child Stephanie, and people like this. There's a lot of history. There's not a lot of time to, to talk about these guys because you're here to interview me. But, uh, but these were these were my mentors. These these are the guys that I grew up. That were great composers and writers and producers, right? And Gene Barge, people like Gene Barge, and uh, and Paul Serrano was like the Afro American studio. So much history. Natalie Cole, Marvin Yant. So you might have heard of these names what about before. Curtis Mayfield. Uh, was Curtis Mayfield. Well, Curtis Mayfield had uh, Kurtom Records. Kurtom Records, right? So he wasn't necessarily really at Paul Serrano much because uh, he had right. his own studio. Yes. And Aretha Franklin was coming through, and of course, all that music from the Curtis. So mm -hmm. all of this led to you traveling the world. Yeah. So so what happened? I end up. I was I was a studio musician and traveling. Then I when the when the girls when the emotions wasn't on the road, because uh, I was mainly with them, uh, starting out. And then I started playing. Uh, when I became a session musician, I started playing on people's records like the Shylights, the Dells, mm. Walter Jackson. Um, uh, who else am I for? There's so many. And then there was uh, obscure sessions, too. Like, I would play on all kinds of sessions for all kinds of artists I didn't even know either, you know. And then, and then I end up uh, playing a lot of blues sessions with, all, with a lot of our great uh, legendary uh, blues artists like uh, Buddy Guy, Junior Wells, Fine Type Perkins, James Cotton. Ooh, uh, that's, uh, that's a lot. That's uh, a list. Uh, nice discography. B.B. King. B.B. King. Uh, um, uh, Oh man, there's so many. Uh, 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 Billy Branch, Sugar Blue. Um, uh, so where's your album? You know what? That, that's an interesting question. So many people ask me about this, right? I've written over probably about 400 songs that I actually have, right, right. Uh, in my catalog of songs, and never not even released, not even one, until so, so now. So that's in the making. The big. 
that's Chuck that, that publishing, that's, that's, yeah. movies, films, magazines. Uh, all of that. Uh, uh, what's happening now, what, I, what I'm in, in the midst of doing now uh, is, is working on uh, releasing my fir the first Afro-American bass player magazine. What is that called? Uh, it's called Base Tribes. Base Tribes. Base Tribe Online Magazine, and, and, and I'm trying to document and publish uh, bass players that don't always get published in the other bass player magazines, because they miss a lot of us, right? And so I thought it was very important, no matter how famous or not, that any contribution, whether you're playing at a club or the little small, so that it doesn't matter, that your contributions mean something. And so I was inspired to do that, because there are a lot okay. of great bass players that didn't get really are talked about in the other magazines out there. So I thought, you know what, I think why don't I go ahead and 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 publish uh, a, the first African American bass player, which there's not, there's, there's, there's not one ma black <laughs> magazine that, that exists right now. That reminds me of sort mm -hmm. of like the uh, program, The Soul Salon, where there's uh, under, unknown chefs, chefs yeah. painters, sculptors, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. But uh, is there a reason why, uh, do you think just like, 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 like yourself, I'm pretty sure you, probably would be concerned with who plays the music at the Grammys as they're walking up to get the awards, who's the band guy playing in the back? We never know who they are. That's exactly right. Same thing on record as well as uh, on the on the ground. You got it on the ground like on the the Motown records. Guys, right, the funk, and Motown yeah. and, and the Funk Brothers and things like that. And we need more documentaries that, that, that need to document uh, uh, great contributions by African American musicians, which never, which in America, we don't really highlight that great really you mm -hmm. know and that has done like major contribution when you think about larry graham and that revolutionized right, thump right. bass okay right uh, no uh, books on it or yeah something. you know we know quincy bring them out a little you know, bit but. yeah you know and we don't have enough uh in our industry that support that you know and if right. you look around everybody might know who the lead singers are whether it's aretha franklin to luther vandross to whoever but no one ever actually really knows who the musicians are and which is, you know, what would it be like, music be like without having a musician to play? And that brings me to my next question. Like, why, why, in your opinion, aren't there more like Charlie Mingus albums or Charles Mingus? I'm just saying, you, you see sax players. Uh, you might see Wynton or Bradford Marsalis, but you don't see drummer albums too much. I mean, Chris Daddy Dave, Robert Glasper, piano players, but you don't see bass albums. Is, 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 is yeah, that because uh, everything's uh, well, going digital or just... Well, well the digital revolution uh, has definitely ch uh, changed the, the uh, dynamics of what we hear. I, actually, we, we, we're hearing more people have... Uh, 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 we're hearing more bass albums and different of all kinds of music, uh, genres of music because of the digital revolution. Because back there, you know... You know how much it costs for analog, you know, to, to actually do a whole album analog-wise? Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, two-inch tape, a hundred and two hundred and something, $25 or, uh, a, a, a tape. <laughs> and then you got to still hire musicians and producers and studio time. So so digital is good now. So digital, th there's, there's good and bad aspects about, uh, okay. uh, there's a pros and cons, put it that way, uh, with, with the digital revolution. What we have to understand about digital is that with all the sampling that, that took place, uh, from from real instruments, uh, that didn't that did or uh, there there's been some spiritual damage because of that because digital is cold, uh, analog is warm. Yeah, and analog is really warm, so you can feel the spirit in the air just like when you play a bass and you play it out of a a, a natural speaker. Uh, it's the physics is what you're feeling the vi and that right. helps feel the vibrations that right. way. Digital doesn't have any vibrations at all. Wow. So that's so that's so, so so if you look at <laughs> when you hear digital music now, you notice you're not it's, literally it's you're not smaller. really listening to music. You don't feel it don't make you feel good like it used to. Yeah. We don't have a lot of good feel good music right now, you know? And and a lot of it is due to the a lot of the sampling. Uh there's some good things about samples too, and the sampling has gotten better. Right. Where they try to, you know, but nothing beats a real musician. So, so you're still alive, which is good. So I'm assuming that you're still putting bands together or going to be doing some shows throughout the summer in Chicago. Bring, because real music's got to live somewhere. Well I, well, I think real music is really coming back, and people are starting to see the the spiritual benefits of of live music. Now, you know what's interesting? I've I've, I've been meeting a lot of producers that sell tracks. Mm -hmm. And they always call me to add some live something, guitar, bass, or keyboards on it because they don't play. Yeah, I know. But they're techie 
their 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 instrument their is the digital right. Their instrument now is, is digital software Logic, and stuff like that. Right. Logic, reasons, Cubase. And I remember uh, 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 the digital revolution happened during my generation. So it was the beginning and end for. Uh, un employment for musicians back in the day. So a lot of those guys had th that that couldn't keep up with the technology, or didn't want to deal with the technology, right. or wasn't savvy enough to, or wanted to deal with it. Just they they, they 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 just went out it's of the interesting, business. Interesting, like your shows. I don't see the guys that I see producing at home making these uh, beats for like Usher and that kind of sound. They're not coming to our shows. But then again, I don't see musicians like yourself at their houses. So I don't know. There's a, there's a middle. Well, well, what, that's well the disconnect <laughs> happened because um, well, it, it, it's a longer story, and it wouldn't be enough time on your show to talk <laughs> about that. But but uh, uh, when when it happened to my generation, what happened is that they kind of scattered. So when digital came, that became a new thing for, for young people. Okay. And I remember young people were walking around going, "I'm a producer," you know. Right, right. And to me, the way I see a producer is not a guy who can just push buttons, but a guy who can play an instrument. Or he can do some composing or write some charts out, or and so I, I, at, at times I felt like I was kind of appalled at it sometimes yeah. when these young young people it's like yeah. you haven't been on the planet that long. And another and, thing, and, uh, and the fact that you you just said in your in, in this interview here that you've met so many people as a producer and a performer, you meet, you meet managers and studio guys. Whereas I think if you're just at the computer, you're not really socializing with too too much. You just create and then say, what do y'all think? And I'm a producer. I'm better than somebody else. Yeah, and then when what happened when I when I when I would walk in the studio, given that I had a lot of studio experience by this time, and so when I would, would see some a lot of the when when the hip hop came in, because it started with Grandmaster Flash, okay. right? And when when hip hop was like like conscious music, and then became unconscious, and then then the then the Russell Simmons phase came in. And then what, what what I would call it gotten uh, uh, ghetto fabulous after okay, that. Okay, yeah. now people might not like <laughs> what I'm saying there. that it's about there. that, That's where it's at now. but <laughs> yeah, you know. And so and so so the music got bastardized in my in my view. Uh, that's my own opinion, but yes. but if you look at the facts of history and what's been going on, and we know that hip hop is really a fashion. It's and and maybe it could be a fad to some, but but then when they start, you know, the profanity that start happening and and the and the violence. That came with it and the degradation of young women. That you know that took music into a whole new level of um, of uh, I don't know what I would call it, but it was such a degradation that music wasn't like that was so beautiful that anybody can hear it, young right. or old. Right. And then and then with young kids, you know, that are impressionable was hearing all this stuff. Then all of a sudden, gangster rap was was all of a sudden it was right. cool to not talk about love anymore, you know, and things okay. like that. So. So uh, so look, uh, what do you got going on now? Just this 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 uh, the positive stuff that Chuckaluck got going on in Chicago and and beyond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well well that well there's a lot obviously going on. I'm, I'm, it, what I've been doing as of late, I've been putting together uh, uh, bands for different artists, uh, national artists like uh, 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 which is Howard Huey Howard and Huey. Uh, that's from and, Shalimar. And, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, and, I, and uh, 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 people like Roy Ayers and many others, uh, I put shows, I put bands together. So that's one thing uh, for, for different venues. The other thing is like I'm ready, getting ready to launch the Bass Tribe magazine. That's another thing. And then I have my foundation that's called wow. Down With Guns, Up With Instruments, hmm. which is a gun exchange program with, with any the police department around the country. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, launch it here in Chicago. Uh, that where you exchange uh, uh, guns for instruments and, wow. and workshop programs, uh, and and uh, and then there's all, also an employment arm for for our young people because uh, there's too much violence going on. But that's but that's another story as well because it's all systemic by our institutions that are that are part of the degradation in the black community. Okay. But the other thing. Uh, uh, that I'm doing is now trying to put the, a band together where I don't want to put a tour uh, together of different artists, uh, people, where we want to send a message out there that we definitely want to, you know, we definitely need reforms, uh, uh, whether it's law enforcement reforms and other reforms of our institutions so that we can uh, create a path for our young people uh, in, uh, in America because we need a, path, a new path now to, to get people's minds off so they can create again. Because we, because right now, uh, in particular in the black community, we're, we're stagnated right now, okay. and so so music is one way to 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 glue everything back together and unify us again through the art form, and give kids kids some education on their history, 
uh, uh, through the music. Since most kids like music, and that's a universal thing, and everybody likes music, mm -hmm. and so we so we're gonna use music uh, uh, in doing fundraisers and concerts to 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 get more instruments in kids' hands, uh, yes. to educate uh, our, our young people. So that's what I'm currently working on right now. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot, Chuck. So, yeah. look, thanks for coming, but I, I want to hear you play. Maybe we can jam oh. on something together, but, you know, thanks for okay. coming on the show. Right. Well, hey, hey man, well, thanks for having me. And, man. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and much much success, man, uh, with uh, with your show, man, because yeah, this is your first kickoff, right? Yeah. So yeah. history, it'd be ten years from now you, before you know it, right? <laughs> and you look back and go, wow, that was me and Chuck Luck. That was Chuck Luck back and ten man, years ago. You, you know, you, you ever had a beer? You ever had? A no, well, you know, I used to. You know, I used to, but, you know, I'm trying to you still to stay clean, young, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to, you know. What's up yeah. with the fashion? These are your hats? You got your own clothing design? Thing? Well, I'm working on, on, on a few clothing designers uh, right now okay. uh, for my, my band. Uh, got a lot of interesting things coming up with, uh, with the Bass Tribe Band. It's called the Chuck Luck and the Bass Tribe Band. So got a lot of interesting bass players. And uh, a lot of things coming, man. So look for it, man. I look I'm, forward I'm, to I'm, it. I'm coming at you, and, man. And I, and really, I heard really you got great. a lot of girls. Uh, I don't know if they're fashion models or just bass players, but they all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. they're everything. Ah, yeah. <laughs> all right. They do everything. There you have it. Chuck a luck. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, Mike. Hey, man. And hey, man. Again, man. <laughs> congratulations on your on your new show, man. And uh, wish you uh, wish you much success and blessings to you. All right. All right. Hey, man. Let's go do something. Okay. <laughs> you All right. Hey, man, you know what? I want you to probably play with me at the Chicago Music Awards coming up uh, 2015. No question. March 15th, man. So when, you're a good musician. When? March 15th. 2015. Where? That's, uh, it's a theater. I can't, uh, it's, it's, it's at a theater. I can't think. The name is so hard. It's, I think it's in Poland. I can't remember. But, but I'll be uh, there. But I would love that. But you want to play something, man? Yeah. You want to play something with me? We yeah, come do on. a little jamming? Come All right, on. let's do that. All right. All right, all right. Welcome back, everyone, back to Stage to Show TV and the Spike Rebel Experience. Tonight's special guest, Chuck -a Luck and the Bass Tribe Girls. Here we go. <laughs> Asking the our creator for clarity. We need clarity to find peace in our world. Our children need clarity. We must lead by example on our planet. As our creator watch what we do and what we say. It's very important for our children to know that peace is the only way for us to live on this planet. Violence has no place on earth or any other universe for that matter. So we continue to ask for that clarity in our lives because man must find peace. Peace has always been the answer. Violence would never be the answer for our universe. So we ask for clarity. As we go through this life filled with pain, there may be many battles just to stay alive. Look what's going on in this world today. Do we like what we see? Do we have what they need? Clarity, can you tell me what I need? Clarity, can you tell me what the children need? 
clarity can you see what we need clarity can you tell me what the children need tell me tell me tell me tell me Do we like what we see? Do we have what they need? Clarity, can you tell me what I need? Clarity, can you tell me what the children need? Clarity, can you see what we need? Clarity, can you tell me what the children need? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Ask for God for peace. Because of that, we know that the world continues to find love. We must continue to find love in our world because love is what makes everything as beautiful as it is. 
the world needs love. No matter where you come from in the world, we know that love brings everybody together. Do you agree? Do you agree? Yeah. I do, I do. Do you agree? Yeah. The world needs love, y'all. Love, 
Spike Rebel Experience with Chuck Luck and the Bass Drive Women. So I'd like to thank you all for uh, checking out the Spike Rebel Experience, and our guest today was Chuck Luck. Thanks, man, for coming, showing us, sharing that love. The pleasure's mine. Yes, sir. Who, thank who, who, you. Who's your band? Uh, you well, these uh, these young people, um, uh, we just started uh, working together. And so, uh, so that's who the band is. So they can kindly, you can, they can kindly tell you their names. And Rachel, uh, Alicia Ma, AJ, AKA Black with Soul, Devania, Devania. All right. And again, thank you all 
But this is beautiful to see some ladies well, on the base also. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for sitting in with us, man, and jamming yeah. on your Spike show, your first kickoff, man. This that's is what like, we do. Wow. And, 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 mean, and the audience, if you beautiful. see the art, that's, it's a replica of this guy because he's an award winner, nominee from, from some other awards last year, et cetera. Chicago Music so, Awards. Matter of fact, that's why I had a base looking like a, a, a tuxedo. Just need to draw the hat, then it'll be you. Right. Where are you up next? So the next thing coming up is uh, March 15th, uh, uh, the, what they call the 34th uh, mus uh, Annual Music Awards uh, coming that's March. That's in Chicago. That's in Chicago. They've had it now. This is the 34th year now, huh. uh, anniversary. So we're going to be doing a performance there, of course, a uh, live performance there. And we're going to do acoustic set there. So I want everybody to come out, man. It's really exciting. It's a lot of fun. And for those who have never been to the Chicago Music Awards, it's just like the Grammy Awards. Okay. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot, it's a lot of great networking people. That There'll be different celebrities there. Uh, and so I'm looking forward to that. How can they find information? Is there a website or? Yeah, you can find me at Bass Tribe Mag. That's B-A-S-S-T-R-I-B-E-S-M-A-G on Facebook, that's Bass Tribe Mag, and you can find me there. Or you can find me at Chuck -a Luck Bass if you want to, if you can't find that. Or, or you can, uh, we can, in, you can inbox us, uh, and we'll give you more information on, on what time okay. we're going to be playing. As a matter of fact, it starts at 6 o'clock, the VIP party. Wow. There at the Chicago Music Awards. So that's what's next up. And so you can contact me there if you want more, more information. Like I said, hit me up on Facebook at Bass Tribe Mag. Thank you for listening. Check us out at social media. If you like this type of art or anything else that we're creating with, with positive music, check us out at stagetoshow.tv or spikerebelmusic.com. Thank you. Let's go. This is the Spike Rebel Spirit.